Oh, All right, guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. I am talking one of the most gorgeous days on this planet since the day I was born 64 years ago. Unbelievably spectacularly gorgeous, over the top, beautiful. It is Sunday, October 1st, 2023. We have rolled into the last tri, what do they call it, the last trimester, or the last quarter of 2023. Uh, anyway, what a way to open up October. We want to give a big hand to Mother Nature. So we are going to celebrate this absolutely glorious Sunday afternoon by reading a doomsday sermon from this fellow I have never heard of in my entire life. All of these years down here, never heard of this guy. Uh, I want to give a huge thank you to uh, my lieutenant from Vermont, uh, Lieutenant Tom, for uh, turning me on to this fellow who goes by the name of he calls himself Marshall Brain. Marshall Brain, I can't uh, imagine that's his real name, who calls himself a futurist, an inventor, a, I guess, a North Carolina State University professor, writer, and creator of How Stuff Works, he is the author of the Doomsday Book, The Science Behind Humanity's Greatest Threats. I would, uh, if I still interviewed people, I would have this uh, man uh, on the show. So Tom sent me his latest essay called just how bad is climate change? It's worse than you think. Uh, and as good as this article is, it's obviously talking, you know, centering in on climate change, uh, which you might have figured out on this channel, I do not center in on climate change. But this article is, is actually, this essay is actually kind of a part two uh, from the essay that he just wrote, uh, I believe, last week. Uh, kind of the part one of this essay uh, called, We Have Destroyed Our Ecosystem Now we await the collapse of civilization. And this is coming off of a group, WRAL. I don't know if that's a radio or a TV station in Raleigh. Tech Wire. WRAL Tech Wire. Uh, this is a long, long involved piece. Uh, I'm going to try to uh, get through it. Uh, I'm going to put the link. My computer is acting weird. My camera battery might be... Anyway, if, if, if the camera shuts down or whatever, uh, I'm not going to pick it back up. And you can go on the link... And I will also put the link, I will try to remember to put the link to part two, which you need to read yourself. But anyway, take it away, Marshall Brain, and explain to us how we have destroyed our ecosystem. Now we await the collapse of civilization. <clears throat> the headline for this article is, we have destroyed our ecosystem. It is not, we might destroy our ecosystem, nor we are on the verge of destroying our ecosystem, nor unless humanity takes steps X, Y, and Z, we will destroy 
our ecosystem. The headline is, we have destroyed our ecosystem. The die is cast, the deed is done. We have gone too far and we have destroyed it. There was a speech this week by UN Secretary General and Dooms Doomster in Chief Antonio Guterres, which he links to you here. Uh, this quote from the article is salient, quoting the article. The UN Secretary General said that the world is decades behind in the transition to clean energy. We must make up time lost to foot-dragging, arm-twisting, and the naked greed of entrenched interest raking in billions from fossil fuels, Guterres said, adding that some fossil fuel companies had embarked upon a shameful attempt to stymie the transition. Close quote. In this, this is back to, uh, back to Dr. Brain. In this short quote, we see many of the buzzwords that summarize the destruction of our ecosystem. Foot dragging, naked greed, entrenched interest, raking in billions, fossil fuels, attempt to stymie the transition. <coughs> the problem is that he, meaning, you know, Doomer-in-Chief Antonio Guterres, the problem is that he is refusing to state the obvious. He says we must make up for time lost. Unfortunately, we will not do anything of the sort. We will not make up for time lost. We will not moderate our behavior in any significant way. We have already gone too far and we are not going to stop and therefore we have destroyed our ecosystem. Who is we? I keep seeing this question, of course, my answer, anyone who wants to know who we is, look in the mirror. Dr. Brain is not quite ready to meet me on this one. Who is we? We are the developed and near developed countries who burn most of the world's fossil fuels. So we are not uh, the undeveloped countries who burn down their forest for charcoal because they don't have fossil fuels. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to try not to do this. This is Dr. Brain's otherwise excellent rant. Just uh, I, 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 anyway, I'm going to try not to break in because I have a lot to get to here. <clears throat> who is we? We are the developed and near-developed countries who burn most of the world's fossil fuels. Why won't we do anything significant? Why won't we moderate our behavior? It's because we cannot. There are many reasons for this, but the simplest way to understand it rapidly is to ask one simple question. If planet Earth stopped burning fossil fuels today, what would happen? The answer is just as simple. The effects would be profound and billions of people would die within a year. Why? Modern agriculture would come to a dead stop. 
nearly every tractor in the world and every combine harvester is powered by fossil fuels. Without fossil fuels, there would be no plowing, no planting, no cultivating, no harvesting. Therefore, there would be no food for people to eat and billions of people would starve to death. Modern transportation would come to a dead stop. Even if there were food, it moves around a country like the United States and diesel trucks and diesel trains and diesel ships. Without fossil fuels, all these vehicles stop moving and we all starve to death. Modern electricity grids would come to a complete stop. More than half of the electricity in the U.S. comes from fossil fuels like natural gas. Modern factories would come to a complete stop. Factories need electricity and fossil fuels to power their operations, and they need trucks and trains to bring their raw materials for the factories to digest. Without <coughs> these four essentials, modern society collapses. They all require fossil fuels. So then, the big question, can we wean all of these sectors off of fossil fuels? Yes, of course, but it will take decades, even if we ignore all the power wielded by the incumbent fossil fuel companies and their lackeys. What if we saw a headline tomorrow that said, world leaders allocate $10 trillion to rapidly decarbonize all of global agriculture, transportation, and electricity generation in five years. We will never see this headline. There is no group of world leaders thinking in this way. World leaders are not on the verge of allocating this kind of money, nor are world leaders even contemplating such an allocation. Modern economies will be burning fossil fuels and therefore adding gigatons of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere for many decades to come. <coughs> History shows us that this <coughs> is what will happen. Modern economies will do this because there is no near-term alternative to fossil fuels that does not involve spending trillions of dollars to speed things up. Because world leaders don't want their people to starve and die, fossil fuel consumption will continue largely unabated. And therefore, the Earth's ecosystem as we know it today is lost. The only question is, how long do we have until we see the collapse of modern economies and civilization? <clears throat> How do we know for sure that Earth's ecosystem is lost? All that we must do is look at the headlines in articles from the past summer. Headlines like these. Humans have exceeded six of nine boundaries keeping Earth habitable. Brazil could break all-time temperature records in waning days of winter. NASA confirms 2023 was Earth's hottest on record. Earth just had its hottest summer on record. UN says warming climate breakdown, warning climate breakdown has begun. By the way, it's record hot temperatures in the Finger Lakes of New York here. 
it will be in the 80s by Tuesday. Back to the headlines. It's not just coral. Extreme heat is weakening entire marine ecosystems in Florida. Spain hailstorm destroys nearly $43 million worth of crops as it hits nearly 100% of some farmer's harvest. Ten countries and territories saw severe flooding in just 12 days. Antarctic sea ice at mind-blowing low alarm. <laughs> Antarctic sea ice at mind-blowing low alarms experts. Number 10, we are dropping about 2,000 acre feet per day. That's never happened. What it will take to fill up central Texas lakes. Anyway, I think he made his point. <clears throat> the ecosystem is collapsing. We are watching it happen in real time. Humanity is doing nothing of any significance to slow or stop the collapse. If we were to sit and, dig and digest all the current headlines, the news is horrible on so many fronts. Massive heat waves all over the planet, massive droughts, and also massive floods, massive die-offs, massive forest fires. Earth's ecosystem is reacting to all the carbon dioxide humanity has added to the atmosphere in the ways that the ecosystem inevitably must. Scientists knew this was going to happen. Scientists have been warning us about the effects of carbon dioxide for decades and now we are witnessing the end game. We can also predict what's coming. A combination of extreme heat plus drought causes the Amazon rainforest to light on fire and collapse. A large glacier or two collapses in Antarctica causing significant sea level rise over a short period of time. Drought or salt water intrusion means that one or, more, one or more major American cities run out of water and must be evacuated. Droughts and floods and heat and stupidity combine to cause significant and simultaneous crop failures, meaning that a billion poor people must starve to death. And these disasters are coming. It's just a matter of time. <coughs> All right, so we're going to enter part two of this essay. Okay, it says I still have a battery and my computer's still alive. Okay, the next question, how will civilization collapse? Let's imagine that there are significant crop failures next year. Will this cause the collapse of civilization? Probably not, at least in the developed world. Developed countries have the money to buy what food is available. The poor countries will starve, <clears throat> not the rich ones. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Let's imagine that the Amazon rainforest collapses and injects another 100 gigatons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. This will cause global heating to accelerate even more. The wealthy nations can afford air conditioning while poorer nations will see deaths and 
even less food due to the heat. What will cause the civilization in a developed country like the United States to collapse? The thing that could do it is the simultaneous destruction of several big cities combined with the economic and societal effects from this destruction. Here's three possible scenarios that he maps out. <clears throat> if the Colorado River dries up because of continuing droughts, if the Colorado River dries up because of continuing drought, the collapse of civilization could happen. Multiple large cities in the American Southwest would need to be abandoned. The millions of crazed people streaming out of these cities, along with the massive financial hit from all the abandoned properties, could do it. Scenario number two, if sea levels were to rise by one meter, you know, roughly three feet, in a relatively quick time frame, it would devastate a number of American cities like Miami, Boston, Miami and Boston. Again, we would have millions of crazed people streaming out of these cities and the financial losses from the abandoned properties could cause an economic collapse. <clears throat> Possible scenario number three. If a massive hurricane or two were to hit Florida and cause the collapse of the state's home insurance market, that might be enough. Millions of crazed people would be streaming out of Florida and the banking system would take a big hit from the abandoned and uninsurable properties. I am a real estate investor in coastal Florida, by the way. It is just a fact that nothing of any significance is being done to prepare for these inevitable scenarios. When they occur, he doesn't say if, when they occur, it will feel like a huge surprise to most Americans, especially those experiencing the direct effects. <coughs> Think about the toilet paper crisis of 2020 and multiply that by 1,000. There will be panic. There will be overreactions. There will be bloodshed. Then things can become completely unmanageable. And this is why there will be a collapse of civilization as we know it today. We will pick up the pieces in the aftermath and cobble together something new, but Civilization as we know it today will be lost. <clears throat> Is there anything that could save modern civilization? Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm going to skip this next part guys, because he's being ironic, but, peop but uh, irony does not play well, and I I'm afraid that some people listening to me reading this would not understand that he's being ironic, so you will have to, uh, you will have to uh, go on the link and read this yourself. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, is AI going to save us? The next best thing 
well, what he was talking about was aliens coming down from another planet to save us. The next best thing after benevolent space aliens, you know, showing up in the 11th hour to save us, would be the appearance of super intelligent AI that wants to help the planet recover and lead humanity down a better path. The super intelligent AI would need to establish <clears throat> beneficent global dictatorship that takes over the operations of humanity on planet Earth. As soon as this super intelligent AI appears, it would realize that humans, by and large, are as dumb as a bag of rocks, especially large groups of humans. By replacing all the governments of the world with a single super intelligent government, and by taking control of the planet's industries, there is some, uh, some, uh, some, uh, some, uh, some, uh, some uh, <coughs> hope that a super intelligent AI could bring humanity in for an imperfect but soft landing for the benefit of all. Unfortunately, neither the aliens nor an omnipresent, super-intelligent AI are likely to appear in time. Thus, we, humanity, will get to witness our own downfall. It is quite possible that in the history books, 2024 or so could mark the peak of human civilization on planet Earth. <laughs> Thank you, Marshall Brain, author of the Doomsday Book. For I bringing us to our senses, and uh, guys, just for the record, uh, I do not necessarily, I, I, I think, even I think Marshall's being a little bit alarmist, but what do I know? But what I do know is uh, I have some vacation cabin tourist coming in on this gorgeous day, and I need to go get ready to entertain the masses and offer them some forest recreation. While there is still some forest recreation to offer at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Bye, guys.